All right. Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to today's stream. We are streaming just on YouTube today. So I hope those people who normally watch on Twitch are going to make their way over here. Um, I just want to check something with the audio. Yep. Looks like it's working. Okay. So um, yeah, if you're watching on YouTube and you can hear me and you're ready for an amazing stream, then uh, just type something into the chat. Show me that you're here. So either the audio isn't working or uh, no one's really there. We'll wait a little while. I'll chill out because I need you at the start of this stream, guys, to decide what we're going to be working on today. Let's see if there's... We'll go over to Twitch just to see if anybody's in waiting for the stream. Oh, I've just seen the chat come up here. I wonder why it didn't come. Ah. Apologies, guys. So I'm looking at uh, YouTube chat, and it's there's literally nothing in there. Let's hit refresh and see if anything comes in. But then the video on actually, if I go to YouTube and watch the stream myself, there's uh, there's chat in there. So Razik's in there. Says so anybody out there? Anybody listening? It's the end of or the beginning. Um, it's definitely the beginning. We're going to get started. Ed, how's it going? Edward Latter says it ready. Fake player. Hi Gareth, thought it won't happen today. Came to YouTube and here you are. Audio all good. Jamie Berry's here as well, says hi. All right, so that chat doesn't work. Okay, well, let's get rid of that because that's that's not going to be that helpful, is it? Um, if you are in my Facebook group, I've just posted a little thing in there that says uh, I'm about to launch a new weekly newsletter, which is going to give you actionable tips and strategies for improving your tournament poker game. It's absolutely free. Uh, it's going to be delivered to your inbox every week. But I need a name. I can't think of any names. Well, I know I can think of some names. I just don't think they're very good. So I need I need you to help me out here. All right. So if you're in the Facebook group, then get in the Facebook group and offer some suggestions. This is what we've got so far. There are 17 comments already on this. Chips and Nuts, Weekly Riverboat, Chip and a Chair, Plus EV Weekly. I quite like that, Plus EV Weekly. We can almost do like Plus Dollar EV Weekly. It hasn't got the same ring to it though. Full Ring, Level by Level, Spinning Up, Tips for More Chips, Bluff Harder, See Better, Fold... <laughs> that's, that's good. Bluff Harder, See Better, Fold Faster, Value Stronger. Daft Punk related was feeling it. Ha <laughs> Chip and Cash, ICM and adjusting for bounty tournaments, how and why news, on the bubble, mindsetting, bankroll management, and go for it. That's quite run, up, run off the tongue, does it? Uh, and James's gems. Well, there we go. So those are the suggestions so far. If you think that you can do a better job, then uh, yeah, you should uh, get on over to to the Facebook group and and, uh, and get involved. Um, I just realized that none of the commands are gonna work on YouTube. I've decided to move to YouTube. I have a bigger audience, so we've got almost 8,000 subscribers on YouTube, so that's exciting. We are, what, um, 73 
subscribers away from 8,000 subscribers over here. If you haven't hit the subscribe button and you you like what you see so far, because we've done loads of poker chat so far, um, then hit the subscribe button. Then, um, and uh, if you're in the not in the Facebook group, I can, uh, I'm gonna post the link in here, groups. And you can join the Facebook group in there. Uh, Jamie Berry says, I like On The Bubble, all seems fair picks. So the problem is there's a Facebook group called On The Bubble. Um, so I'm not sure I really want to go down that route for the newsletter. Uh, let's see what this picture's looking like. I've actually moved offices. I don't know if you can tell. Um, I've got some new flowers in the window. This used to be the guest room. And my office used to be over there. And we decided that we would. I'd put the office in here and the guest room is now in there. So new office, new beginnings, um, I'm trying on YouTube, I think like there's huge number of you around. Um, well, really, yeah, I guess uh, the stuff the the post I put out was that um, we're going to be on both channel, uh, both YouTube and Twitch. And most people watch on Twitch, but there's no way of me really getting a message onto Twitch. And I think, according to Twitch, you can't stream on both platforms now, whether you're a partner or a, uh, whatever the other thing is. Um, affiliate, maybe, something like that. So I thought, right, well, I'm just going to um, stream on YouTube and see what happens. But I suppose the five of you who are here, we should get going. And it's over to you now to decide what you want to study. So we're going to be doing some uh, post-flop drills. I want to do single raise pots, but apart from that, it's kind of over to you. What we could do, so here are some you know, potential options. We could do what you've got here, which is button versus big blind, facing a big blind check, not that interesting. We could do facing check raises. We could do playing from the big blind after check raising the flop. Um, spoiler alert, this is going to be a series coming for my uh, academy members, and I know some of you are watching right now. Um, so that's, uh, yeah, some ideas. I, I quite like that one just because we can just get ourselves into some some great spots after check raising the flop. So maybe that's a good one. What do you guys think? What do you, you know, those are some ideas. Uh, Fake player says, hey, were you on YouTube also last week because Twitch I didn't see you? No, so last week, unfortunately, I had to uh, cancel the stream because... Um, England suddenly saw the sun uh, for the first time and it was too hot. <laughs> but, you know, the office, I mean, kind of the reason why I've moved in here as well is because the front of the house gets a lot of the sun and, in the afternoon and this room doesn't, so it's a bit cooler in the summer. Uh, plus it's actually a bit cooler today anyway. But, uh, no, I wasn't. I didn't stream last week, but we are hopefully going to be doing this every week from now on. Um, but, yeah, guys, let me know what you think. If you don't decide on a topic then I think that I am just going to decide what we're going to do. I quite like the check raise. Check raise flop. So we've, we, we're going to check raise the flop and then we're going to see what to do on different turn cards. So I think we could do something like that. Let's have a look. Um, if you haven't already, guys, this is my book. Um, no, that's not my book. I'm watching the I'm watching the stream and doing this. It says listen to the podcast. Well, listen to the podcast if you haven't already. It's called Poker on the Mind. We've done about 170 something episodes now, so definitely definitely check that out. Um, fake player says anything works for me. Really, I need help with all of those spots. Okay, well let's uh, let's let's do this. It looks like nothing's on screen. Don't panic, guys. We will get there. So the if you've never used Pio Trainer before, we're going to do out of position and we're going to go check, bet, raise, call. And we want to do it to the end of the hand. We're just going to play out of position. We're only going to play one table because, I mean, I'm not sure we can get four screens on this on here. But we're going to do one. So what should happen is we check flop, they bet, we check raise, they call, and then we have a decision. Uh, Jamie Berry says, seems good. What positions are we studying? Button versus big blind. Yeah, so we're just going to do 30 big blinds, button versus big blind, but a particular node, which is this one. Let's see if it actually works. Yeah, I think we're I think we're good. We're going to do auto start new hands. Uh, maybe not actually, because we might get some, some feedback. Anyway, so this is what's happened so far. We've checked. 
Our opponent has bet big, 3.4 big blinds into 5.5. And we've gone for a check raise and they've called. And this is what's gonna happen in every single hand. So we are going to attempt to play turn, turns now. Um, we've got a couple of options. This is the geometric sizing. We could probably choose a smaller size than this, to be honest, but not in this sim. Or we could just jam, or we could check. And um, yeah, I think we've got some interesting options here. So we are gonna get ourselves into some, some, some great spots. Um, but I think just jamming here, we can get called by worse by, uh, for sure. So I think jam is, is the way to go. And the fact, yeah, I didn't click auto starts new hands because if I go down here, you can see that we've now got some feedback right at the bottom and it said jam 100% of the time, small bet zero, check zero. So yeah, why do we get to, to jam here? Like in terms of thinking about what kind of hands we get value from, we're gonna get called by some combo draws uh, that are worse than our hand. Obviously got, you know, some equity, but you know, our hand's still doing pretty well. Um, think about the 8x hands that in position bet, bet calls the flop with, so maybe some 8-7 or that might just check back flop. Uh, we've got some 10-8 that might bet call the flop. What else? Um, it's kind of it, I guess. Then we've got some 6x of clubs and 4x of club hands that are going to call that we can get value from. Now of course when we jam here we can get called by better hands, right? A lot of over pairs are going to go for a bet here we might not expect to see like top set bet big necessarily on this flop. Um, so yeah, that's my sort of ideas, ideas with that one. Let's, uh, let's have a look here. Ed says, get called by two overs in a draw, jack turn of clubs also combo draws. Yeah, exactly. So there's, there are hands to get value from, um, but we are also sometimes gonna run into it. You know, um, we could run into better nine, we could run into an over pair. Uh, we can run into two pair, like so. There's, yeah, there are some hands that we, you know, uh, we could run into a set, I guess, as well. Like bottom set, pocket fours seems to, and sixes, I guess, would bet more frequently than pocket nines. Uh, okay, let's see. So what happens here? Small bet, we check raised. Oh goodness me, and um, and button calls. Now the nine is pretty much a blank. It doesn't. The problem is. We got to think about the kind of hands that we check raise on the flop, and I think um, that nine doesn't really interact with them. So it's not like the nine is an amazing card. So I think that we're probably going to be doing quite a lot of checking here. I'm going to go for a check and see. Yeah, checking 100% of the time versus this really small bet. I think we just probably fold. Yeah. Okay. So we went for it on the flop. That's fine. Um, we want to have some hands like this, you know, 10 of spades blocks some continues, like 10x of spade hands that can continue. Um, there are going to be better turn cards for us. Uh, let's see if I can just, just show you that. Second, what do we have? 10 of spades, six of clubs. So you can see that, just make sure you can actually see this. Cool. Yeah, that's in line. So there are some, yeah, there are some some cards. So a seven, you know, actually, let's just go back to equity. Uh, with our exact hand, not very good. But with, a, you know, on a seven and a six and a three seems to be pretty reasonable. So we can see quite a lot of betting on, on those cards. But with our actual hand, the cards that we really like, you know, you've got the seven of spades, we're going to jam. Three of spades, we're going to jam. Um, it's not like our equity is particularly good on those cards. But not with our exact hand, I mean. But... Um, but the three of spades and seven of spades seems pretty reasonable for our overall range. Um, after check raising the flop, but then yeah, so we're basically looking at spades, we we could you know can continue on. Jam on a seven and a three, we can bet big on the other cards. We've got a lot of checking. I mean, overall, you can see that once we go for a check raise with this hand, and uh, we're very often going to be checking turn on regard you know regardless of what the the turn is now obviously there are some turns that we want to bet as you can see the hands in red and then the hands we want to check are, are going to be the hands in hands in green whenever you check raise uh, a hand like this that basically is like a three to a straight three to a flush kind of blocker ish type of hand 
you're really looking to improve your equity or for it to be a card that is amazing for your range to to want to continue on so most of the time with these these kind of hands we're going to be doing a lot of checking okay uh, but yeah then we can just give up like there's no issue with um with giving up here um, okay, so we've gone for a check raise here. We're only playing 30 bigs deep, but, uh, big blind versus button. This is the kind of hand that we want to get all in by the river. So I think just betting geometrically, which is going to be this size, looks good to me. There's plenty of worse hands to get called by. Uh, if I show you villain's range, like there's all these weaker king x hands, queen x might not fold, a x spades won't fold, combo draws won't fold, straight draws won't fold. Uh, well, eight out straight draws won't fold. So there's plenty to get value from. Then we get jammed on. Well, wow, this is uh, this is uh, this is nice. Um, so in Solverland, I don't think you're ever supposed to fold here. <laughs> in practice, I'm really struggling to find bluffs from my opponent because I think most humans would take hands that would bluff. I'm trying to think what they would be, which then makes me think if I can't think of the bluffs, then I'm sure, yeah, the solver can. But does the average person, can the average person find a bluff here? So, yeah, I don't think they're going to be taking a weaker King X and jamming with it. I think they have a good bluff catcher, say, with you know, King 9, King 7, something like that. Um, they could try and get maximum value from, you know, like, we're supposed to bet call this hand, right? But... They could get in, in with aces and ace-king, knowing that we can have king-jack, king-10, king-9, etc. Um, so yeah, I think this is a, I think this is a call in theory, but I, like we've check-raised the flop, we've bet turn and got jammed on. Like what kind of bluffs? Let's see if I can find some bluffs and pull up the range explorer. So I want to see, so most of the, most of this is you know, the jamming range is going to be top pair. If you look at the top pair, it's going to be king-10, king-jack, ace-king. So king-10, yeah, we chop with king-10, but we then lose to king-jack and ace-king. So we really need this to have some, some bad hands in it. Ace-10 off, is that realistic? Ace-10 suited, is that realistic? Mm, I don't think so. Nothing type hands, bit of jack-10, not really. Um... Eight out straight draws, four out straight draws. Yeah, I mean, so we're really like, oh, we've got king 10. We block the most obvious bluff. And I don't think they're going to do it in the first place. So I think in in practice, I would fold here. But uh, in theory, never supposed to fold. Yeah. So I think it's a nice, uh, a nice adjustment here. Uh, okay, so a paired board. We've check raised the flop. I do think this is a really nice spot to play aggressive check raises. Uh, big blind versus button. We're going to have plenty of jack X. In terms of chip EV, I'll just show you this um, hero's range. We've got a lot of jack X if, if we defend in terms of chip EV all the way down to jack two soft, jack two suited, obviously. But further, yeah, getting close, yeah, further into the tournament, maybe we don't have as many offsuit jack X hands, depending on, you know, maybe this guy had 80 bigs and we've got 30 and there's some 10 big blind stacks at the table. Maybe we don't defend jack two, jack three, stuff like that. Um, but still, we're going to have a lot of suited jacks. And we're going to have still a chunk of, ja of suit jack X hands. So I think uh, I think check raising looks good. Um, so and obviously the, the solver's already told us that it has check raise. So it's you know it could have been a low frequency check raise, but I don't think it is. I think it's pretty high. And what's nice is you kind of wrapped around the four. Now I, I would prefer to have like three to a straight, three to a flush. So having six five a club, six five a diamond, six five for spades. But I think six five off is going to be fine. Whenever, again, whenever you, remember we talked about this before, if you go in for a bit of a spicy check raise and you don't improve on the turn, so like, you know, we don't improve to a draw or a pair, um, and the 10's, you know, not a particularly good card for us uh, because he can bet call like 10x of diamonds, 10x of clubs, 10x of spade type hands, then we should just pure check. Uh, yeah, so pure check. And then facing this really small bet, there's nothing we can do. We just have to fold. Okay, yeah, fold 100% of the time. So I think it's like whenever I work with students on trying to be more aggressive, what happens is they learn where they're supposed to do lots of check raising. So, for example, on a paired board, we do a lot of check raising. 
Um, but then they're kind of like, okay, well, I know that, but now my opponent's called and I'm playing out of position with six high. I don't know what to do. So I've got to think about whether the turn card is good or bad for our range. Does it improve our actual hand? And um, if it doesn't, you know, you can you, you can just check. Like there's no there's no like law that says that you have to continue. Uh, let's have a look at the strategy. So overall, we've check raised on this board, this jack jack four board. You can see the ten is you know just doesn't have a lot of bedding. These big cards don't have a lot of bedding, but the lower cards do. So that kind of suggests that in positions bet calling with hands are sort of wrapped around the jack. Doesn't necessarily mean he's got a jack, but it could be like king queen, king nine, uh, ten queen. You know, backdoor straight draw, backdoor flush draw, stuff like that. So we don't see as much betting on on these cards, and you can see equity is favourable for in position and not for out of position. But the lower cards more favourable for uh, for us. We're going to be uh, check raising some uh, some forex, and yeah, you know, when a low card comes down, it. We, four is still going to be pretty reasonable to a pretty strong hand. So let's have a look at this. So on a four, we just always want to bet, even with even with our own, even with six five off. We can do this little trick again: six of diamonds, five of hearts. And I just want to highlight. Uh, so a three and a seven give us a straight draw, and you can see we continue to bet quite frequently. Not you know not all the time, but quite frequently. A four, we're just always going to bet. Um, we check raise a lot of 4x on the flop. So our main check raises are jack x and 4x and then lots of 3 to a straight, 3 to a flush type hands. Um, but yeah, that's uh, kind of where we're, where we're at with this one. Okay, another paired board. This time we have it, which is, uh, which is nice. And I do think this is... Um, a spot where we're going to be betting fairly frequently. We're going to check raise some 10x, we're going to check raise some 8x. Uh, interestingly, I think it's a spot where our in position might not bet all the time. The problem, the reason why I think that is um, uh, villain's range. Yeah, so they're not betting, they're not betting all the time. The uh, Because of the 8x, now this is a really interesting one. That because we have a lot of 8x when we defend in the in the big blind, right? We've got the offsuit 8x and suited 8x, um, as you can see. The thing is, though, villain opens, you know, queen 8 off, king 8 off, jack 8 off, 10 8 off, 9 8 off. So, whilst there won't be a, it won't be a pure c bet, they still do have a lot of 8x in their range. So, understanding what their strategy looks like. Is really really important. If instead it was like 10 7 7, 10 6 6, 10 5 5, then I would expect villain to be checking back a reasonable frequency on the flop. So that then has a, an effect on our strategy. Okay. Um, anyway, so yeah, they, they do some checking on this board, but not as much as like 10 7 7. Uh, okay. So uh, I think we just want to continue to bet here. Sizing wise, I'm not really sure. I'm going to go this size. Okay, so it's not quite right. Okay, so we can check or we can small bet here. Now that we've check raised and bet the turn big, uh, we've come down a node that isn't correct. But um, let's see what happens. Yeah, we've kind of butchered it to be honest. But the the turn wants us to um, wants us to to small bet. Um, they still get cold by a lot of straight draws and 10x and 7x and maybe some high cards as well because the bet was only really small, like 20%, I think. Uh, okay, so this time paired board in position definitely has some 9x, so I would expect to see them bet very frequently. And I want to see us check raise pretty aggressively with a 9. Um, but we're going to have some other hands that can check raise, obviously. This is a spot where we might be check raising well over 30% of our range, which means that we, once we get called, we've got to be a bit careful and make sure, you know, on a, on a blank turn card like this one, that we uh, don't go, yeah, don't go too crazy. Having said that, remember the low card idea, you know, if we'd have check raised, uh, 
uh, a 3x hand, so I think check raising 3x and 9x and maybe some flush draws, backdoor flush draws, 3 to a straight, 3 to a flush, stuff like that. Anything wrapped around the 9 and the 3. Then the 4 is going to be better, you know, re is going to, well, not necessarily better, but um, pretty reasonable for, for us, whereas like a big card would be not so good for our, for our range. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. I'm not sure if I said that well. Um, so I think I want to continue to bet. Okay, that's pretty interesting if you look at it because that suggests that checking most frequently is is the play. Um, I guess we've got a really strong hand. We can't always just bet all of our 9x. We've got to check some of our 9x sometimes. Um, let's have a think about why. Well, if we check... Our checking range becomes really weak if we always bet a 9, right? So having some 9x in the checking range looks good. Um, what else? I guess like if they've bet called the flop with jack 10, queen 10, king 10, king jack, something with like 3 to a straight, 3 to a flush, then the 4 is a complete blank. So we almost want to give them an opportunity to start bluffing as well. That's a very interesting spot. Um, I guess we just send it. Okay, well, we don't send it again. Oh, look at that. Ace deuce off. Can you believe we lost this hand? Um, uh, what was I going to say? I guess the same thing on the on the river. Once we've bet twice, we don't block spades. That we give him an opportunity to bluff. And we can bluff catch. Um, that's kind of where I think this hand's going. I'm getting a lot of paired boards, which is good because the paired boards are the ones that we probably check raise the most often. Um, so here we have um, improved, right? So I think we can bet here and we can get folds from better hands. Uh, the problem is if we go too small, so this geometric size is like 48% pot, we are going to get called by the ASEX. So maybe it's a spot where we get to jam. Um, hmm. Let's try this big bet and see what happens. So, okay, yeah, I mean, there's, there, there isn't any jamming. Um, maybe we jam if we have a club, I guess. Not sure. Uh, big bet looks fine. Now on this run out. So we're gonna have four X hands here for sure. Um, I think we weren't supposed to bet the turn, but if we bet the turn, let's say we had a club like the Queen of Clubs, we blocked some flush draws, we could bluff some club rivers. I think that would make a bad bluff then on this river because we block the kind of hands we're trying to fold out, which can be like King Queen of Clubs, King Jack of Clubs, King Ten of Clubs, uh, sorry, Queen Ten of Clubs, Queen Eight, if those bet call the flop. Um, but here, I think we can, I think we can bluff here. I think we get King X of Clubs, Queen X of Clubs, hands to fold river. Um, and how often do ace x hands call? Probably indifferent, aren't they? So I think this could be a good spot to bluff, he says, as it says check. Okay, interesting. Let's um, let's try and work out what's going on here. Not sure. Not sure. I thought it was pretty reasonable. I mean, we've not lost a lot. But checking seems uh, definitely seems better. Hmm. Not sure. So Jamie Berry asked why. I wonder why it checks a hand like King Nine. Uh, hopefully you un you heard the explanation I went through. So wants to have some strong nine x to to bet plus you know give them an opportunity to sorry wants to have some some strong nine x that can check to call or to check raise. Otherwise, your checking range becomes really weak and uh, we can give them an opportunity to bluff as well because when we bet, they're going to fold a lot unless they actually have you know, a piece of the board. So all of those, if you think about how often someone's supposed to continue versus a check raise on a paired board, there are a lot of hands that are just going to fold on that turn. Okay, so we have check raised the flop. This is not a good board for us, is it, on the flop? 
let's just uh, let's just have a think about this. So in position here is just so far ahead of us in terms of equity on the flop, and then so when they do bet, we've decided to check raise. Okay, we didn't choose this; the computer chose it. Uh, but it seems like a it seems like a, a reasonable candidate. Um, you can certainly get better hands to fold. Um, I don't think in position is going to really love life with say queens, jacks, tens, and worse without a spade. Uh, I think that's an important point. They're obviously not going to fold an ace or a king. They're not going to fold a flush draw. Probably not going to fold a nine with a spade. So like queen nine off, jack nine off with a jack of spades, queen of spades, whatever. Um. So, yeah, their range is going to look like some under pairs to the king, some under pairs to the nine, I guess, but all of those hands without a spade. Uh, if we bet again, can we start getting folds from a king? And having eight and a deuce blocks him from having king eight of spades and king deuce of spades, which, you know, is a really easy call on the turn. So I, th I think we can start generating some folds from some king X. We, you know, we've got eight high. We're not going to get folds from better flush draws, I don't think. So, uh, and I don't think we're going to get called by, uh, sorry, we're not going to get any folds from uh, from an ace. But I do think we can get yeah some folds from, from king x and those under pairs like queen, uh, queens, jacks, tens, eight, seven, sixes, fours, threes, if they bet called the flop, you know, with a spade. Um, that's my thing, thinking. We've got the last one wrong, though. Okay, hundred percent bet, and then we've we've rivered the flush, and yeah, I guess we just send it. Get called by two pair. There we go. Um, oh, there's actually some check in here as well. Give them a chance to potentially bluff, and again, make sure that your checking range isn't too weak. So just you can't just bet all of your strong, your yeah, all of your strong hands. You want to have some as a check instead. Uh, okay. Ace six off. So again, not a good board for us. Um, our only options here, so it's gone big bet and a and a raise. We've got a small bet or a jam, and I think we're probably just supposed to jam here. We can still get called by worse. Just, um, but yeah, it's not gonna be. It's not a good board for us in the first place. We face a big bet and uh, our equity is going to be really, really poor on this board. Think about all of the hands that we're missing, like aces and tens and nines and um, you know, ace ten. Maybe we have ace nine. That seems reasonable. But uh, I mean, I mean, and ten, uh, ten nine, I guess as well. But then we have like ace, we don't have ace jack, we don't have ace queen, we don't have ace king. So then we get ace eight, ace seven, ace six. Those are our best ace x hands. We can check raise for value and get called by by worse hands, um, you know, he can't bet fold a hand like jack 10, for example, or kings, queens. Uh, anyway, I'm going to jam for value. He folds. Right. Was that right? 100% correct. Okay, so this is a pretty interesting one. I think we've faced a small bet. We've gone for a check raise. Think about the kind of hands that would bet call the flop. I do think there's going to be some hands like jack 10, jack 8, jack x of spades, jack x of diamonds maybe, you know, especially the big ones that we, uh, yeah, so this is not, it's not ideal, I would say. Um, so I don't think we, I'd, I feel like we, we don't get to bet big here with our hand. I just don't think there's enough to get value from because if he's bet called the flop with a seven or a deuce or a weak draw or just over cards, he's going to fold this turn. So I think small bet or check is probably going to be the answer here. Um, yeah, let's go. Small bet, still get called by worse hands. Ha, <laughs> jack of spades and on the river. So we've got two, well, three options, check, block, or jam. I feel like jamming is way too thin. Is he really going to hero us with like pocket eights, seven X, ace deuce? 
I don't think so. We don't have a spade in our hand to block the occasion. Yeah, the times when he has some some flushes by the river as well. Um, so it seems too thin to jam. So I want to rule that out straight away. Um, small bet. The problem with the small bet is do, do we just like value cut ourselves against a better nine, nine eight ten nine, queen nine king nine ace nine, and then like what does he have that is that's worse than worse than our hand? So there's going to be some, yeah, there's some 7x, but in terms of 9x, there's not really any weaker ones to get value from when we've got a, well, a 6 isn't going to play because there's a 7 on the flop. Um, and it's a pad board. Um, so I think we would probably just check. Cool. Check 100% of the time. He now bets. So now we've got to work out, well, I'll tell you the, the theory approach and then the the exploit, I think. So whenever we're in bluff catch mode, we've got to think, do we block value and unblock bluffs? Now, in terms of in terms of reasonable uh bluffing candidates here, I was immediately thinking like eight six could uh could take this line for uh for imposition, right? So having the six to me, just screams, don't, you know, this is bad, bad bluff catcher. Uh, I have seen that question. I will answer it in a moment, Vegas and the Mirage. Um, so I think the six, six makes it bad. I don't, I don't know what other six X hands would be in there, but eight, six really, really jumps out to me as the most obvious hand that bet calls the flop, calls a small bet in position on the turn. And then when we when we check river, because he can have some value hands here, he can have a jack and he can have a full house and he can have a flush, he can have a straight, that he then needs to make sure he's got some bluffs in there as well. So having the six in our hand, I think is, is really bad news. Um, so I don't really like having it. Um, you could then say, okay, but what if we had a spade? So if we have the six of spades, then it might tip it towards being a call because we block six X of spade hands. So yes, we block some bluffs, but we block potentially more value hands in that sense. You know, we block jack nine, pocket nines, and some flushes. Whereas here we only block jack nine and pocket nines, and we also block bluffs like eight, six of hearts. Anyway, I think there's a fault. Cool, that's good. Back on track. Uh, so the question that came in, Vegas and the Mirage says, in order to drill a specific node, will small save suffice or do you need to save flop and turn? Uh, all of these are run with um, with small tree, but that is flop and turn. The very small tree with the with the flops cached is, I've never tried it, so I'd, I can't answer your question. Uh, I don't know the answer. But all of these are with the small tree, which is without the rivers. And you saw how quickly the river was was solved like it, it didn't take too long my machine's pretty reasonable but nothing spectacular um okay so small bet we've gone for a raise pretty unusual to see a small bet isn't it on this on this flop we've gone for a check raise though and our opponent's called and now we've actually improved and there's now a four to a straight out there um or four line as I've heard it referred to before. Um, we do beat some hands. We beat some flush draws now. We beat some 4x hands. That's kind of it. So I think we can check and decide what to do. We might go check check quite a lot. Uh, not sure. It does. Goes check check and we land on the river. So seven of clubs. We've got to think is our hand good enough to value bet? Mm, no. <laughs> Not when like we're literally trying to get called by a four. Uh, so I think we just got to check and we hope it goes check, check, and we beat a four. I think that's how I would approach it. Um, I don't really want to face a bet. Okay, that's pocket jacks, fair enough. And uh, we're 100% right. Okay, cool. All right, paired board. Once again, we've gone for the check raise. And now we improve on the turn. So I think this is a fairly common heuristic that we've gone for a check raise, but then we've actually improved. 
but we haven't improved significantly enough where we can can continue to value bet because we're way ahead of a 10 and you know potentially a 10 starts folding right i think i mean i would probably fold a 10 now so uh but then we're miles behind a king so if we can't get value from a 10 and then we're miles behind a king our hand's quite nice to just check and see what he does right uh so i think that's going to be the play yeah well, 98, 98.5% check, which seems pretty reasonable. And now at this stage, I think that he can call a 10, but I don't think we get to value bet particularly big. So, of course, he could still have a king. We could be put in a tough spot here. We block ace queen. Eh, maybe ace queen uh, bets the turn, though. So I think blocking river looks reasonable. And we got called by a 10. Nice. Okay. So what does this say? GTO trainer couldn't generate a matchup. The, okay, so this will just be where a flop, there was a big bet and a, oh, it was a jam. I mean, okay, well, that's not going to work then, is it? All right, we've gone for a check raise again, a paired board with bottom pair. We talked about check raising 4x and 3x already. Uh, this is an amazing spot because we talked earlier on about high cards and low cards. Let me, um, I'm going to show you this on here. This shows you perfectly. So uh, everything but a four, you know, remember that he's got all the over pairs and we don't have any. Uh, but a seven, six, five, a three, and a deuce on this board, pretty good for us. And then the bigger cards, you know, an eight plus, especially aces and kings, just not very good for us at all. So this is where I see some mistakes where players will... Um, They'll have a hand like this, and they've improved, so they continue to bet. But actually, this is a, a turn where we are pretty sure, before we click on it, that with our range, we're going to want to check quite a lot. Uh, where are we? King of King of Hearts. Yeah, 62% check, 36% bet. And that's not with our hand. That's with our range, right? So we've improved, but because we're going to be checking quite a lot, Checking a top pair type hand to be able to bluff catch now is 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 nice. I think. Um, let's just pull that up again. Let's just see. King of diamonds, three of diamonds. So our equity is like pretty pretty decent, but we're pure checking on a king. Can you see? So there are some. Yeah, we can continue to bet on on other cards. But a king is the, you know, we're checking really frequently. Okay. Okay, so now he goes for a bet. We block a lot of strong hands here. Um, he's got pretty small. I think I prefer check call, but I'm trying to think of arguments for just getting it in here as well. Because to me, this is this just looks like... Now, obviously, his range is balanced, right? It's, we're playing against a solver. But in terms of playing a human here, we've gone for a check raise on the flop, and then we've checked the turn that's better for them. This, to me, and then they've bet small on the turn. This, to me, just screams a weak. Like, five, sixes, sevens, eights, nines, tens, jacks, queens. And if we call, then we... Let him get there with any kind of draws, and we're probably going to go check check on the river with uh, if he has like one of those under pairs that we just talked about. So I'm not sure. I really want to jam, but obviously he can have some some king x. What do we get called by that's worse than a king? And what kind of bluffs would we ever check jam in this uh, in this situation? Like, do we just take like five six or? Five deuce and just send it. That seems quite nice, actually. Which then forces him to call with uh, with with under pairs. Whereas if he goes check, if we just check call, he's just going to check back like queens, jacks, tens, nines stuff, right? What do you guys What do you guys think? Am I over egging it here? Should I just check call, or do you like getting it getting it in here?
<clears throat> so Edward says, just came back in. What do we get called by when we jam? And I'm just watching the YouTube stream. I am playing with my phone rather than playing with anything else, but I can understand how <laughs> looking at the video uh, does look a bit dodge. Um, what just came in? What do we get called by when we jam that we are ahead of? Um, okay, yeah, so I talked about how we check raise the flop and then we check this turn because we've improved, but we want to make sure that we still have some King X and we're going to be checking this turn a lot. It's a better card for imposition's range. But to me, this screams like an underpair. And I think if we check jam, we can get called by underpairs here. If in practice we never get called by an underpair, then check raising's horrendous. Um, even if we deny equity to like a bluff, like ace five, ace deuce, six five, if he has it, you know, that kind of thing. So, um, yeah. Not sure. Ed didn't appreciate the, uh, the, um, <laughs> not sure what. Um, anyway, so yeah, I think we can get called by worse. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play aggressively. Let's see what else. Um, fake player. I don't think check call wins us this, wins us this in game. We're not just trying to win though, are we? Like, we can't ever just approach poker hands as how do we win this hand, because, you know, if you've got seven deuce off and the board's ace ace king six three, you can't just like check jam river and because that's the only way you can win the hand, right? So. That's not really how I would approach it. We're just looking to get value from, like, if we jam here, can we get value from worse hands? Does that then allow us to, to bluff? That's my thinking. Okay, look at that. 100% check raise. 100% jam. Um, but yeah, so Ed says, uh, under pairs may be supposed to call, but in practice, I don't think they do. Yeah. I think that's that's reasonable. So yeah, check call would be better in that sense, I think. All right, another fun spot. So we've bet they've bet the flop small. We've check raised. We now land on this turn card. Um, so this is a, again, this is a great example. I'm really glad that we're starting to get these. This is a terrible card for our range. Because if we check raise for value, we don't have many ASEX in our range that check raises. Uh, our main value hands are going to be 10x and our opponent can bet call the flop with some ASEX so we should be checking this a really high frequency of the time right, with our whole range uh, but also with this hand I think uh, that's my that's what I think okay yeah check 100% and then against this bet I think we um, we just don't have enough equity to call we're going to have some 10x that can continue, not all of them, but, you know, some of them. We're going to have some ASEX, I guess. Uh, but yeah, he's got a fold here. I wish I'd shown you the uh, equity on that on that turn card. I wonder if I can still show you it. In positions, equity goes up to 58% and we're pure, pure checking range. Okay. Um... I don't think this is worth even worrying too much about. I think uh, I'm just going to check and give up, even if it's wrong. This, this, these kind of boards just don't happen very often or enough for us to worry about it. Um, okay, well, we've so three Broadway board. We expect in position to use a big size fairly frequently, and then that's what they've done. And we've check raised. We've got top two. Yes, okay, we lose two sets and straights, uh, but we can still get value from worse. You know, pair plus straight draw. There's a lot of them. King, queen, king, jack, king, ten. Flush draws, uh, jack, ten, stuff like that. Then on the turn, that seems like a very bad card. I'm not sure that we are going to check raise all of ASEX on the flop. But does he bet call ASEX on the flop? I guess he's got like ace, queen, ace, jack, ace, ten, ace, king. Hmm. So what do you think? What do you guys think? Let's uh, let's let's open it up. I th well, I'm not going to tell you what I think. What do you guys think on this turn card? Like, let's think about our, our range first. Do we do a lot of betting here or a lot of checking with our range?
Okay, Jamie says check range. Uh, okay, let's. Uh, I, I agree. I, I think uh, let's take a look at equity. So our actual hand against um, villains range is forty one percent. Our equity with range versus range is forty one percent. So this we're an equity dog, and whenever that happens, we don't really want to put too much more money in. Uh, this is a pretty awkward spot, but they went for a small bet. I don't think we get to fold, but we're not loving it, are we? Um, so let's see. Okay. <laughs> so calling's fine, but check jamming would have been fine. Check jamming. Check jamming. What do we? What do we get called by? That's worse. On that turn, that seems. Not sure about that. Um, let's have a look. Ed says, checking, I think the king seems better for his range. He has all the stronger king X because we would three bet pre. I'm less concerned about king X and more concerned with straights because we don't really check raise any ace X on the flop, right? But he could bet, bet call some ace X. Um, but yeah, I mean, all of his king X, king queen, king jack, king 10. Like, he's just going to have an easy call if we bet. So yeah, I can see it from, from that point of view. Uh, I'm still not sure about this check raise. I, I just don't get it. Um, and then on this this run out, do we just bluff? Right, we're playing the board now. He can obviously have an ace. He could actually also have like missed flush. Like does a hand like seven six of spades? Bet call the flop. Check to uh, sorry bet turn, like and then we jam and they they can't do anything. I mean they're playing the board as well, right? So maybe it's just one of those weird spots where both players just get it in, right? Because we're playing the board. Um, but I would have said this player has more a sex. I'm gonna bet. Okay. Oh, that's such a weird hand. I'm not really sure. Uh, I still don't understand why we would check raise check jam turn, but. That's weird. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, queen 10, jack 9. Well, on the turn, jack 9's a straight. That doesn't seem very good. Queen 10, I'm not sure, bets the turn. So we don't get value from that. So I, I can't see a worse hand that we get value from uh, on, the, on the turn. I think queen 10 checks and jack 9 is a straight. Queen 9 is also a straight. On the turn, right? I still, yeah, I wonder why it's saying check, check, jam. Ah, okay. Are you ready for this, guys? I've found the answer. The reason that we can check jam the turn some of the time is because they're supposed to bet call combo, well, flush draws and 10x of spades. Uh, so there you go. We can get value. So there are some hands that we can get value from. We, but we, yeah, we don't really, uh, it's not a great spot, is it? Right, let's do one more hand. Let's try and make it a funky one. Okay, well, this is fairly funky. We have a flush. Um, so in position is going to bet call with some high card hands with a spade. They're going to call with some Asex. I'm not sure that they necessarily call with all of their 8x. I think they start folding a 5 for sure. Uh, queen x, so they could have like king queen off with a the king of spades or queen jack off with the jack of spades. Plus they got all of those ace x hands that we uh, that we talked about. So I think um, I think just continuing to bet here seems reasonable. 60% of the time, checking sometimes as well. Let's do another one because it's, we've still got some time. Okay, so we've gone for a bit of a spicy check raise once again. Um, big bet and a check raise. I don't expect to see many check raises on this board. I'm going to have a look at the sim. <laughs> no. So I looked at the sim and the check raise percentage on this board against a big bet is 0.07%. So shout out to Pio Trainer for finding the aggressive line. Um, the problem is, is that we've just come down a branch of the game tree that we're just not ever really going to be down because we should just be playing check call 
against the big bet. Um, I guess we can jam because we have a combo draw and we can get better hands to fold. Yeah, jamming. 22%, betting small 46, checking so all options available. Okay, let's continue through again. So this to me, you know, on a king, queen, seven board, we faced a big bet, which I, uh, we've check raised. I think there's still hands that we can get value from. You know, think of all of the weaker king x hands that our opponent has. Uh, not in there very often, but you can see that they are. there are some hands in there. Uh, when we do jam, I think we can get called by 7x of spades, 6x of spades, maybe some queen x calls. We block the best king x hands. But yeah, the target really is like king 8, king 5, king 4, king 3, king 2, plus like jack 7 of spades or 10 6 of spades, stuff like that. Um, cool. All right, so let's uh, let's wrap it up there. I uh, yeah we 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 tried this today on YouTube. Looks like we're gonna struggle with numbers, but that's okay. We have to let people know that it, we're just gonna be streaming on YouTube rather than Twitch now. Um, or maybe I'll do one stream next week on Twitch and tell everyone right from next week onwards we're gonna be doing YouTube. So uh, keep an eye out in the Facebook group, or if you're friends with me on Facebook, um, then I'll be posting on there. And uh, that's going to be it, guys. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't bought it already, buy my new book, The Final Table. It's available on DMB's website and on Amazon. Uh, and join the Facebook group, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash poker profits. Guys, it's been a pleasure. See you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.